Ben fouls lock. T minus one minute. Rock, report range status. Rock, range is green. Roger. Forty. Stable at step three. T minus thirty seconds. Twenty eight. Twenty five. Status check. Go out of go center. Go L fifty five. T minus ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two, we have RD-180 ignition, and we have liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the NRO L-55 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. We have booster PU to close loop control. You're hearing the voice of Rob Gannon providing launch vehicle ascent data. The RMR valve position looks good. MTU shaft speed looks good. Flight control is nice and clean, seeing normal disturbances for this time of flight. Main engine continues to operate normally. Vehicle is now flying at half the speed of sound. We are three miles in altitude, 0.3 miles downrange, traveling just over 1,000 miles per hour. RD-180 continues to burn normally. Up on Mach 1. L-55 is now supersonic. Flight control continues to be nice and smooth, RD-180 operating normally. We have throttled down to 95% right on time. Nice and smooth. Two minutes into the mission, everything looking good. Started Q Alpha Limited steering. RD-180 is burning normal. And the vehicle now weighs 50% of what it did at liftoff. 22 miles in altitude, 20 miles downrange, traveling at 3,000 miles per hour. Just continue to burn normally. And we fired the pyro valve, pressurizing the second stage reaction control system. Pressure is rising as expected. Next event we're looking for, bottling down to 92% thrust. Expect that in 10 seconds. And we've got the throttle down, engine continues to burn normally. Parameters look good. Passing through 200 seconds in the mission, everything looking good. Vehicle now weighs one quarter of what it did at liftoff. 52 miles in altitude. 107 miles downrange, traveling at 7,800 miles per hour. And we've begun blue space chill down. Preparing the RL-10 for main engine burn on the second stage. 
Party 180 is throttling down. Preparation for Pico. Blue Space Chill Down has completed. Pico. Booster engine cutoff. Coming up on stage separation. And we have stage separation. Looking good. Pre start on fuel. Pre start on locks. Ignition. Full thrust. The RL10 is up and running normally. Good start signatures. Coming up on fairing jettison. And we have fairing jettison. Both brake wires indicate a good jettison. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 4 minutes, 37 seconds. We've just seen the successful liftoff of the ULA Atlas V carrying the NRO L-55 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. As I mentioned earlier, today's mission is also carrying 13 CubeSats sponsored by the NRO as well as NASA. And I'm pleased now to be joined by Andres Martinez, the Deputy Program Manager for Small Satellite Technology for NASA. Andres, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, thanks, Matt. That that was a great launch, and I'm very excited. Uh, the the optical communication and sensor demonstration, uh, also known as OCSD at NASA, is the first of six missions for our program. And um, in in the next nine months, and today was a great start. Uh, OCSD will be uh, demonstrating for the first time on a small satellite laser communication. That's really exciting to hear about the kind of capabilities that we're able to take to orbit uh, with these CubeSats. So why is NASA so interested in these kinds of technologies and small sats, CubeSats? Small satellites provide NASA the ability to rapidly develop um, and, and launch groundbreaking technologies into space. Uh, at NASA, we have also been using small satellites uh, to conduct fundamental space biology uh, for over a decade now. It's amazing what you can do with a with a small satellite. So this is actually the first of um, two that are that are currently in the plans. Um, why why is this mission so important to NASA to demonstrate this optical communication and and sensor capability? Yes, this is the first of two uh, OCSD missions. the The second one will be in four, in about four months. Uh, laser communication will provide small satellites the capability of significantly increasing the amount of data we can download. Uh, from space in a very short period of time. Uh, for example, during my last uh, space mission, uh, it took us over 100 days to download just half a megabyte. OCSD will accomplish that within seconds. It's amazing, the, the leap forward in technology. So tell me a little bit more about how the spacecraft is going to be able to interact with the ground station. Sure. We have a ground station on Mount Wilson near, near Pasadena, California. Uh, OCSD will be using its very sophisticated attitude control system uh, to align itself with high precision as it passes over Mount Wilson and its ground station. And it's going to beam a laser from 600 to 700 kilometers up in space, and it will hit a target um, that's only 30 centimeters wide. That's pretty incredible. That is amazing. Uh, so. How will this kind of technology enable future exploration with NASA? Laser communication is being investigated uh, to also support uh, deep space missions like Mars, for example. Uh, OCSD uh, demonstrations will provide quite a bit of data so that the technology can continue to be matured. So these tiny sp spacecraft demonstrations, what do you see as the future going forward for this kind of capability? You know, the uh, small satellite technology capability has been leapfrogging. Uh, it's moving very rapidly, and, you know, it's gotten the attention of NASA and other agencies and the commercial industry. Uh, in the future, we see um, uh, swarms of satellites supporting the bigger missions as scouts, and so, um, you know, for that, we need to continue to advance the technologies. Well, it's really exciting. Thanks so much for joining me this morning, Andres. I wish you the best of luck with OCSD. Uh, we had a great start this morning. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for inviting me, and I wouldn't be anywhere else. Thanks. This, this was a great experience.